Hey everybody, Mike here. Um, this is a hose I bought, and it's connected to my rain barrel, which uh, my rain barrel fills up really fast. Man, if it was a really heavy rain, that thing will fill up in a couple minutes. Now this thing takes eight minutes to fill a two gallon container. That's a quarter of a gallon a minute. And then I can go and dump it on my tomato and pepper plants who right now are like, feed me, Mike, feed me. But I'm like, no, you gotta wait for this hose, which I guess doesn't have an adequate diameter uh, and just dribbles. And I'll tell you what, guys, that's what happens when you get older. But listen, uh, if I could speed up this step, I could water my plants faster. So this is what we call the bottleneck of a process or the rate determining step. If I was going to go and buy a different hose that was a little bit wider in diameter, well, then I could speed this step up. So if you speed up the rate determining step, you speed up the whole thing. So let's go talk more about that uh, after I feed my plants because they're starving right now and I hear them and their appeals. Well, hi everybody, hi. Today we're gonna to talk about reaction mechanisms and one of the things that we've kind of kept in secret from you, unless you remember back to thermodynamics when you talked about Hess's law, is that we really don't kind of always tell you that a lot of the reactions that happen happen in multiple steps. For example, you are carrying out combustion, you're taking in carbon-based stuff, and you're converting it to CO2 and water, but you're doing it in multiple steps. So let's think about a reaction mechanism like a trip to work or school. And I'm gonna use the example of a trip from Dayton, Ohio to Columbus, Ohio, but it's one of those times when you get into uh, uh, a little bit of a delay because there's an accident. And I'm gonna say the accident is on I-70 because I wanna be realistic. <laughs> it's straight, but somehow people manage it. Anyhow, here's the mechanism of the reaction and we have these individual steps. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call these elementary steps. The whole thing is called a mechanism. Like for example, the beginning stage is Mike's driveway. I start there and then I end up in Columbus and it takes five hours and 18 minutes. And you're saying, well, that's way too long to get to Columbus. Well, what I'm telling you is that I'm going to sit on the highway for five hours uh, because there's an accident, which by the way, please don't do. Uh, so I go from Mike's driveway to Linden Ave. That's not really where I live, but I, I don't want to let you know because uh, sometimes when after I give an exam, I'm afraid that people will show up with pitchforks and torches at my house. So this is Linden Ave is the next step to I-35. That takes one minute. Mike's driveway, by the way, I didn't put, that takes 30 seconds to get out of my driveway. And then uh, Linden Ave to I-35, that takes uh, a minute. And then I-35 to 675, it takes like three minutes. And then 675, you get the idea. That takes 15 minutes, but then I get stuck at on 70, st sitting in standstill traffic because there's an accident. And the bottom line is the whole process takes five hours and 18 minutes. But that time I sat, um, on I-70 is what we call the bottleneck of the reaction. Or we call this the rate determining step. And so the bottom line is if I'd have sped up that step, I could have gotten to Columbus much quicker. What if I had sped up any of the other steps? Well, I could have just, you know, hauled booty right out of my driveway and maybe hurt a, a kid or something on his bike, but that wouldn't have helped any. And by the way, drivers, pay attention to that. Are you really speeding up your overall trip when you do silly things like that? So uh, I could have just said, I'm gonna really, really floor it from Linden Ave to I-35. It wouldn't have mattered. And that, my friends, is why stuff is zero order. 
Nothing is really zero order, but if you speed up a step that does not matter, then those are the kinds of things that are zero order. And so um, usually you're going to find out that things are first or second order, and it depends on the story of the reaction and how each step proceeds. So let's talk next about why something is first or second order, which we've kind of kept as a closely guarded mystery. But keep in mind that we're going to now think about these mechanisms as multi-step processes and what we could do, what could happen, and what slows the whole thing down, like my garden hose that doesn't leak very fast. So let's talk about the individual steps Next. Okay, folks, so next we're going to talk about molecularity, that is, number of molecules involved in a particular mechanism. Now, what's a mechanism? The mechanism is the whole series of steps. It could be one step, could be 18 steps. Uh, and in those steps, each individual step, like here, each of these different steps of the whole trip through the whole reaction is called a elementary step. So if we can, if we know something is an elementary step, we can just do what we call in science, look at it, and we can tell what the order is. Now, let me try to explain. If you just have molecule falls apart and becomes a product, like radioactive isotopes, like unstable molecules that do what we call decay, then really if you just double the concentration, you're just doubling the number of molecules that fall apart. And we call that unimolecular. It doesn't depend on another molecule, it just falls apart. So I double the number of molecules, I double the number of molecules that fall apart. If I cut it in half, I cut in half the number of molecules that fall apart. These things are first order. So that coefficient in the step just becomes the order. Why didn't we tell you that before? Well, because someone needs to figure this stuff out in a mechanism, uh, and I'll tell you about that later. If molecule needs to collide with molecule of itself, let me talk about just a hypothetical. I put us all in a room, and we all are blindfolded, and then there's 10 people in the room. It's a fairly big room, and we wander around aimlessly, and we count every time we collide with each other, if I doubled the number of people in the room, I would quadruple the number of collisions. And that is why, that's why if a molecule depends on a collision with itself or is bimolecular, those things are second order. You increase the concentration by tenfold, you increase the rate by a hundred. See, so it's not much of a magic trick anymore now, is it? Same thing if it's molecule of itself with another molecule. That's kind of like bimole bimolecular because molecule must collide with another molecule, and it's first order in each, but second order overall. So if you doubled the concentration of both, you'd still quadruple the rate. And then I drew a little dotted line here, because the next thing is going to be called termolecular. Termolecular is very rare. How many times have you watched NASCAR and seen a collision between three molecules all at once? Actually, they're not molecules, they're cars. You might see a car hit another car, and then that car collects another car, and then it's a big, it's the big one! But you don't see three cars hit each other very often, so that's very statistically improbable and rare. And I'll talk about why something might be third order overall in a little bit. But now, if you're given a mechanism and the elementary steps of a mechanism, you just look at it, see what the coefficients are, and now you can judge already what the order of each step is, and then that can help you determine what the rate law is. So let's do a example next where we determine the order of the reaction by looking at elementary steps. All right, here we go. What we're going to do next is we're going to look at this uh, mechanism. By the way, the whole thing is called a mechanism. The steps are called elementary steps. And one little thing, 
is if you were to add all the reactions together, kind of like you did back in Gen Chem 1 with Hess's Law, you will find that some things cancel, some things are formed by one step and then destroyed by another step. Those things are called intermediates because they're formed in the middle. You don't start or end with them. Intermediates. But you'll notice if I add this up, 2NO plus 2H2, it still balances. It goes to make N2 plus 2H2O. That's the overall reaction. That's like, oh, I made myself go from Dayton to Columbus. So you see, that's the net kind of change. Now we are given a hint. If the rate constant of steps two and three are much larger than step one, what the heck does that mean? Rate constant is proportional to the speed. What they're trying to tell you in code here is that this is fast, that's fast, and this one here is slow. And remember, we only have to pay attention to speeding up the slow step. The slow step is the RDS. Propose a rate law for the reaction. So what we can do is we can look at this thing and we can say, all right, just by looking at it, this is rate equals K times NO squared. That would be that step. This one would be, and I'm looking over here on the left, and how many molecules it is. This is unimolecular in N2, N2O2. Rate equals K times N2O2 to the first power times H2. That would be the rate law of that step, just based on its molecularity. And then this one would be rate equals K times N2O to the first power, because there's one N2O times H2 to the first power. And so here's what we would do. We would promptly ignore the fast ones, and we would say the rate law of this reaction is the slow one based on its molecularity. The rate law, if we were to go and do a concentration versus time analysis and see which equation fits it, or if we were to go and do uh, change the concentrations and see what the rate is, we could prove that it's rate equals K times NO squared. We only pay attention to the slow step, and you're usually gonna be given some sort of hint like this one as to which one that is. And so, see, the real benefit of this stuff is scientists figure out this part first and then go to this. But now we're kind of revealing that a lot of reactions happen in one, two, 14 steps. And the scientist has to figure out what the slow step is. Because here's why. Let's say this is a problem that is really, uh, uh, this reaction is a problem. If you could figure out a way to slow that down, you could slow down the problem. Or maybe it's something good. Maybe it's something where we want to take some waste product and we want to decompose it. Then if we could speed it up, then we could make the good reaction happen quicker. And you could ignore all the other ones because they don't really matter. It's like me trying to speed out of my driveway. So let's try another example and then we're going to let you go a little early today because we're going to go backwards. We're going to say here's the rate law, now what's the mechanism? All right, now we're going to play a game. So we're going to read this problem and then da 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 the rate law for whatever for NO2 in the atmosphere is rate equals K times NO2 to the first power. All right, keep that in mind. Which mechanism is plausible? So it's the decomposition NO2, which by the way, I don't want to blow it off. That's really important. NO2 is a fossil fuel impurity that makes uh, acid rain. Is it reaction mechanism number one? Remember, we're going for something that would be first order in NO2. And you know what? Frankly, I'm going to ignore step two. But this one would be rate 
equals K times NO2 to the second order because it's bimolecular. Uh, this would be, if we cared, rate equals K times NO3 to the first power. Well, that ain't it either. Neither of those are it. And by the way, you could always add these two steps up and we could say it's 2NO2 goes to make 2NO plus O2. And that's, that's what decomposes NO2, which is a bad thing in the atmosphere. But you know what? It ain't that one. They said it was first order. So away with you. It's not mechanism number one. Oh boy, mechanism number two. Well, I've already learned that I could add these all up and, you know, impress you with the fact that it's the same reaction. Some things cancel. And it's the same thing where NO2, 2NO2 goes to make 2NO plus O2. But we want to see if this is plausible because somewhere it's got to be first order in NO2. And you know what? It ain't. I'm going to ignore these. There's no NO2 in those steps at all. This is bimolecular. One, two. The coefficients become the order. And so, away with you, mechanism number two. You are not it. Mechanism number three, maybe this will be the lucky charm. And you know what? I already see two steps with NO2 in it. And uh, what we got going on now is rate equals K times NO2 to the first order. Ooh, that's looking good. Rate equals K times NO2 to the first order times O to the first order. Now, I'll tell you what, folks. You know Gen Chem 1. O, monoatomic oxygen, is not a stable entity. I bet you this is a fast step, even though we weren't told. And it's probably way faster. This doesn't want to stick around. It's like, I want to be N2. And so, um, at least this step, this, this mechanism has a step that is first order in NO2. And so I'd say plausible? Sure. Is it the mechanism? Mm, I don't know. But it's plausible because it has a step that is unimolecular in NO2. And so, folks, that is the deal with reaction mechanisms. Isn't it nice to take a break from math? And you could say, well, geez, why do we do all that math? Well, because remember, the mechanism is the holy grail, so to speak, of, you know, why you use kinetics. Someone would say, hey, let's determine what the order of this. And they'd look at a curve of data of concentration versus time. And then someone would dream this up and say, hey, can we find some NO somewhere? Is NO created in the middle? And you could prove then that that's the mechanism. So this is pretty important stuff, especially if you want to be a, um, you know, go into healthcare or something. Many of the processes in the body, as you know, Krebs cycle, are multi-step processes. So, folks, we get to put a big old stamp on kinetics. And notice I'm not at my kitchen table. I got kicked out. I make I get people making too much noise. Actually, I kicked myself out. So now I'm in my basement uh, with uh, all my stuff in the basement, which includes my old kids' dolls and stuff I gotta sell on. No, never, don't look at that. Hey, we're done with kinetics. Next, we'll talk about equilibrium, and I will see you then. Peace. Forget which way. Peace.